Hey guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl. Today we are doing my November reading wrap up. So I read eight books in the month of November, which was a little bit higher than my average, but I read two very, very short Christmassy children's books that I will talk about here at the end. I had quite a busy month with Thanksgiving and then we went on a week-long vacation, but I still managed to get about the same amount of uh, physical reading in, which is really exciting. I didn't stick super closely to my TBR, but I managed to read some really exciting things. If you aren't familiar with my wrap-ups, I do my reading wrap-ups first and then tomorrow my audiobook wrap-up will be posted. And I think I read, I don't know, like five or six books, something like that, via audiobook as well. And I have one book that I read and listen to that I'm going to be talking about in both wrap-ups. So first up, I'm going to talk about Never Fade. One of my goals for November was to get caught up on some of the series that I started this year. I didn't do the best job with that, but I at least got to <laughs> Never Fade from the Darkest Mind series. This is book two in the series, and I really enjoyed this one. I didn't like it quite as much as The Darkest Minds, but I also um, had been out of the world for a little bit, so I think that might have been part of it. Um, it had a pretty good cliffhangery ending. Once again, the storyline went kind of different than what I was expecting, and I'm not really sure what is going to happen in book three. This one was definitely pretty action-packed um, and very exciting, and we got some more back history on our characters, but I can't say a lot more since it's the second book. I do plan on reading the third book, but not until 2019. I'm going to be buddy reading that with one of my bookish friends, and I think I gave Never Fade four stars. Sorry for the lighting change, it was like a little bit warm in here, so I adjusted something. <laughs> then I really just wanted to get something in really quickly before I left for my cruise, and I didn't want to get started on one of the books that I would have to be caught up with, because most of the books I'm getting caught, caught up on are like major series and big fantasy books. I knew I wasn't going to be able to read something in like, I don't know, three days before we left for our trip, so I just randomly picked up why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler and with art by Mara Kalma. And this is, this is a won a Prince Award for Excellence. This is a contemporary book and it's basically how the title goes. It starts at the end of a breakup and works backwards to explain why they broke up. But the really cool thing about this book and what I love that was so different from other books is that there are illustrations in here um, and basically are lead character writes a note, a very long note to her boyfriend, which is the entire book, and she puts little snippets throughout their relationship of things like movie tickets, given her necklaces and things like that in the box, and then explains why they're in there and how maybe they related to them breaking up. And so the love story is like really sweet and fun. Our lead character is um, a little bit more unusual. She's more artsy and more eclectic, and the guy that she falls for is more, the guy that she was in the relationship with. It's kind of like your typical football star um, type stereotype and so it was really interesting. And so you get pictures of like things that are in the box in here and you get her just explaining like why they broke up and oh I loved this and didn't like it <laughs> at the same time because it's so sad and it ends kind of sadly and then kind of happily because it's kind of about growing up and moving on and they're in high school and it's it's kind of a easy relationship to fall into and uh, I mean you know how it's gonna end but you don't know how it's gonna end and you wind up falling in love with both the characters and it's just beautiful and heartbreaking and the add-in of all the pictures and the mementos and it was just it was so well done for that reason like I just loved that difference of this book and the writing style Daniel Handler does such a beautiful job I literally wanted to read this in one sitting and I haven't done that in a little bit and it was just it was so good so I think I gave this one 4.5 maybe five stars one that I'm sure that I'm gonna read again anytime soon but I really really liked it and I just I had to know what happened I had to know and so I could for that reason I like bumped up the rating quite a bit I feel like this is a very polarizing book so you're either gonna like love it to death or you're gonna hate it um, but I personally really enjoyed it. So my husband and I took a cruise to the Caribbean and hopefully I will have a blog up here in the next week or so of that, which is going to be really exciting. I read two physical books on the trip and then I think I listened to one or two. So I did pretty good. I wasn't like pushing myself to read because I wanted to really enjoy the vacation. Not that I wouldn't enjoy reading, but we were doing a lot of like active things like the whole time. So anyway, I started off the trip with Illuminate from the Illuminate Files, 
by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is book one in a sci-fi series, and this one, again, has a really unique format um, with not illustrations, but it's basically told in file form of, like, just different files and things that have been gathered up for a case, because this, what happens is there is a group that is mining on a planet illegally for um, a specific substance, and then a big corporation finds out about it and instead of like turning the group in they decide just to take over because they're worried that if they turn them in someone else will find out about the mining space and take it so they just come in and try to like attack the people that are mining and so it's basically a case history of that so you're again kind of working backwards to figure out what happened in a way. And so it's told in different files and chat logs and journal entries and then um, the AI has some file entries in here too. Um, the ship has its own AI that can help control things and it has its own little like journal entries in here. And so I don't want to give away too much more because I didn't really know even that much going into it. And it is so so good. I literally read this in one day because we flew from California to Florida and we also had, we had a two hour layover, but then we had a three hour delay as well. So we were waiting on our plane for over five hours. Plus we had two plane flights. So I read this entire book. <laughs> now it's, it's about 600 pages and it's a huge, huge book, but because of the way files and all the things that are in there, it's probably closer to like a 400 page book. So it does it's very much easier to get through. And there aren't really chapters, there's just more files and chat logs, and so it doesn't really have an ending point ever, so you just wanna keep going and going and going. I was really bummed because I wanted to get the audiobook for this one before I read it, but it just, I happened to find this nice paperback right before I left, and I was like, I just wanna do it because it's so popular and I haven't read it. You did have to pay a little bit of attention, especially if you're not used to sci-fi, um, because if you didn't pay attention to like the dates and the people that were talking because they sometimes call them by their first name and sometimes reference them, them by their last name. And then they also have like their own ID numbers. And then on the chats, sometimes they use nicknames. And so you kind of had to pay really close attention to that. And I got confused just a little bit and I probably missed a few things that were minor. But overall, this was absolutely fascinating. It was so incredible. It was so fast paced and action packed action-packed. There's a love story in here. The lead characters are so awesome. The AI is so creepy and it was scary and creepy and fun and interesting and just like, oh, it was so good and it was so different with the way that it was told and like sometimes I would just get goosebumps when I would like turn the page and see something like crazy because with what was happening it just was giving me chills with the way that things were being told because there are people that are watching footage and like narrating what's happening in the footage and ah, uh, I loved the I am chats especially between the characters because it just anytime there's like an I am chat like it just reminds me of high school and doing a lot of like AIM like AOL instant messaging and stuff and how much fun I used to have with all my guy friends and everything like it was so different than Facebook direct messaging that I am were and it was just it was so fun so I loved this book and I was so sad because I wanted to start Gemini which is book two right away but I had the um, ebook and the audiobook and I was like 100% I want to listen to the audiobook while I read the book and I found out Overdrive doesn't let you read the ebook and listen to the audiobook at the same time so I was just like you know what I'll wait till I get home because I have Gemini as well uh, and so I did but the next book I read on my trip was Ferris of Them All by Carolyn Turgeon. I just picked this one up because it was short. It's like 280 pages. Um, this is a retelling of Rapunzel and also a little bit of Snow White, which is really cool. I've never read a book that intertwined like two fairy tales in that way. Like, I don't know. I mean, like the Lunar Chronicles does like intertwine other fairy tales, but this one was like very specific and it was really interesting. So. Um, Carolyn Turgeon wrote Mermaid, which is a retelling of The Little Mermaid that I read this summer for Mermaid Marathon, and I loved it. Her writing style is so, so good. Um, it's just so classic fairy tale, whimsical, enchanting, like it's not fast paced, um, it's not like over the top, it's just like very lyrical and very 
um, easy to read and interesting and romantic and her male characters are like not the greatest but I kind of like that because they're like flawed male characters and they're not like the main point of the story even though it seems like it would be mostly about romance it's not there's a lot of other meat in there between friendships and growing up and learning things and like um, parental parental figures and all that kind of stuff. So I was just fascinated with the way she tied in the Rapunzel and the Snow White fairy tales. I thought it was so, so well done and so beautiful. I think, again, I gave this like four, 4.5 stars. I loved reading it. It's one you can kind of just take your time with and just like really enjoy. I love fairy tale retellings and I think she is going to be one of my all-time favorite authors for that specific, um, not genre, but brand of book. Um, she has a lot of other retellings that I want to read as well. So I was really excited that I got to another one of hers because it was just really, really good. Then when I got home, I picked up the second half of Eleanor and Park, which I started before I left because I was like, when you think of contemporary reads, I haven't read all of Rainbow's, Rainbow Rowell's books yet. And this is one I really, really wanted to get to, especially because I have this beautiful, like special edition with the fan art and everything. Um, so this one is set in the 80s, so there's a lot of 80s nostalgia about uh, Eleanor, who is a quirky redhead from a really rough family. Like, she has a horrible stepdad, and her, her mom is a good mom in a way, but she's kind of messed up in the head from bad relationships and just... Uh, not good guidance. She's got a bunch of siblings. Her house is crazy. Her life is really hard. Um, she doesn't have a lot of friends. She starts a new school. And then you have Park, who is um, Asian American, I believe. And he has a very loving family, although, you know, normal hardships with family. Um, he's got a brother, and uh, his dad and his mom are really sweet. And then he's like not overly popular, but kind of popular. He winds up sitting next to Eleanor on the uh, bus one day, and then things kind of transpire. And so it's basically a love story about the two of them and the unlikely relationship and growing up and your first love and all that kind of stuff and hardship, family hardships and mean bullies and all that stuff. So, okay. First of all, Rainbow Rahal is a fabulous writer. I love her writing style. It's not for everyone because she goes over the top with her like explanations of things like she talks about how she would give Park like not only like her heart but like her lungs and just all this different stuff like it's just so so romantic and descriptive and intense and I love it. I really really enjoyed Fangirl by her which is the um no I've re I've read Fangirl by her and Landline. Really enjoyed Fangirl and I liked Landline. Um her writing is just superb. Again, this is one that I didn't want to put down because I just enjoyed the writing and the flow and everything so much. Love Story is one of the sweetest love stories I have ever read in my life. The descriptions of like the first time that they hold hands and all that kind of stuff just gave me like goosebumps. It was so sweet and it was just, it was such a like sweet relationship to follow without like all the unnecessary um, drama between the couples for like not communicating and like all that kind of stuff. Like it was just, it was awesome. And the way that like Eleanor interacted with Park's family and just, Oh, it was so great. That being said, the hard parts that Eleanor had dealing with her own home life and her stepdad and the bullies at school, I don't know. I just, this is one thing I don't really like about contemporaries. I don't like the, um, what you call it, like realistic hardships. Like I don't like books when they are like about cancer and the mom is dying or like about a really mean stepdad that is like you know super hard on the kids and intense and like even if it's accurate that's fine but it's a fiction story so for me like I, it's not that I don't want to read about negative things or hard things but there's like a way to do it that's okay and not so intense like if I'm gonna read about like somebody having like a really hard upbringing or like a really intense disease or something I want it to be nonfiction. I want it to be like a memoir or a true story I just don't find the need to do it to a certain level of intensity in a fiction book because it's too realistic to like how certain people's lives are around and I just in a fantasy I don't really care but in a fiction you know, contemporary novel. I just don't like reading that kind of stuff. I prefer them to be a little bit more light and fluffy with, you know, a few hardships in there, but nothing like major. And maybe this was really helpful to people and maybe it wasn't, but I also felt like it was like just over the top extreme. 
and I hated reading about Eleanor's home life. Like I wanted to like skip the chapters because it was so hard to read. And to me, it wasn't like beneficially hard to read, if that makes sense. So anyway, because of that, it was like two separate books to me. It was like Eleanor's home life and then Eleanor's love story. And like, I understand how they fit together. And it was very well done, very realistic very um like heart-wrenching and like all that stuff so people will just like love this book but for me it was just like one that i probably won't read again because i just i couldn't handle that stuff there was just like vulgar language and ugh, i don't know i don't want to turn people off of it because it was a really good book but i bumped it down to 3.5 stars just because of that aspect and then the ending I wasn't happy with the ending. Like I understand how people are happy with the ending and this is just like a polarizing book, but I wasn't happy with it. I felt like it was kind of a letdown in my opinion. Like I don't even know if I want to keep the special edition because I'm like, do I like it enough to have the special edition? I don't know. <laughs> um, but it was a good book. The writing is beautiful. I'm really excited to read um, Carry On because I haven't read Carry On yet, but it was it was a hard one to get through. So I snuck in at the end of the month a Royal Christmas from, uh, I don't, honestly, it doesn't even have the author on here because it's a Disney compilation um, for Enchanted Stories with Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Ariel, and Tatiana um, from the Disney Princesses. This is just a kid's kid's book about the Disney Princesses and them making gifts and having Christmas presents. And I just, I love this books and the pictures are beautiful. And it was fun, so I read that one. And I read Mary Inglebright's version of The Nutcracker, which again is a kid's Christmas book and a very condensed version of the original story. I love Mary Inglebright's illustrations, like she just is one of my favorite illustrators um, for kids books especially. It's just so colorful. The Nutcracker is one of my favorite stories, so I snuck that one in there too. And then the lastly, the last book I read for the month was Gemini, which is the second book in the Illuminae Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So for this one, I, for the first time in my life, listened to it while I read the book because I've heard amazing things about the audiobook. It is a full cast, so there's like, I don't know, it seems like there's like 30 plus people acting in this audiobook. And I am so glad that I did that. I took a little bit longer to read it, but not that much longer. Just would wear my headphones and like follow along and read and listen. And I'm so glad because I think if you just listen to the audiobook, you will be confused. And I think if you just read the book, you could be a little bit confused. But together, it just zapped all that away because you got the different voices in your head from the full cast narration. And then you also got um, all of the pictures and files and things. I feel like if you, you had to be really paying attention otherwise. And also there are just, this particular one has these cool journal entries and drawings from one of our characters. And you would just miss that if you didn't read it. And they also left certain things out of the audiobook because it didn't make sense in the audiobook, but I thought it was kind of important. Um, but it has these cool drawings from Marie Lou of one of our characters journal in. and so I thought that was really important and also like you can tell when there's like certain pages like what's going on and there's just it's just so much better like together and it was such a full experience also because sometimes when you're listening to an audiobook you can get distracted and sometimes when you're reading you can not get all of the content or not get the character changes especially because the um, characters like switch over so often in here from like chat logs to um, being described for a footage cam and all that stuff. So I loved, loved the experience. It was so neat and you get, I wasn't distracted because I was, I had visual things to look at while I was like listening to the audiobook and they also add in like sound effects so there's like gun firing and like ships crashing and typing and oh and so we get new characters in here and I love them at first I was like oh I want some of my old characters back but the new characters in here I loved more than I liked Illuminae I liked this one even more and I think because I did both listen and read and I just I loved our characters in here so much. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to give away but this is just another part of the incident that happens with that whole mining exper experiment and the spaceships and all that stuff and it's got creepy weird stuff that happens in here and it's so creepy and scary and fun and like oh it's just it was so good. This is like one of my favorite books 
of the whole year. I'm so glad that I like snuck them in. I highly recommend listening and reading them. Like even if you don't like audiobooks or even if you prefer audiobooks, I would do both. I'm going to talk about this in my audiobook wrap up too. I would do both. It was, it was so worth it. Even if you take like a month to do it, it was just, I couldn't stop though because like I said with Illuminate, there's no chapters. So you just have like a file and a chat log and a journal entry. So you don't ever have, feel like you're like ended on a chapter. So you just want to keep going and going and going. And this one kept me up super late because I'm like, oh no, I need to know what happens. Super action packed, super fabulous. It's just... It was so good. I loved it so much. I really wanted to read Obsidio before the end of the month, but I only had like two days left and as much as I love it, it just did not happen. So I'll be talking about that in my December wrap up because I've already started it. I'm, I'm scared and I'm excited for the finale. Okay, you guys, those are all of the books that I read in November. I had a pretty good reading month. I really enjoyed everything that I read. I didn't, like, hate anything that I read, which was really exciting. I am basically going to read only holiday books for the most part in December, so hopefully that'll be a great month as well. It's, it might be kind of hit or miss. Usually my themed months are, like, hit or miss because I just have, like, in my head certain things that I like and certain things that I don't. <laughs> um, but tomorrow my audiobook wrap-up will be up and I listen to some pretty great exciting things with that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I post videos every Monday and Wednesday and sometimes on the weekends, and I will see you guys next time on the Bright Side.